All right, good morning. Just woke up. We've got two training sessions today and I'm gonna show you what I eat in one day. So first of all, I need a coffee to wake up. Whoa. Instant coffee. So our first training today is at 8.30 and it's at the Astro Turf outside the stadium here. So it's not so far away. And yeah, normally just have a coffee to wake up. I don't like to take breakfast and I'll eat lunch later. So nice view in the morning. I'll show you Kota Baru outside. Sun's coming up. There's the major river next to the city, and there's the city. So this is the Astro Turf. There's Flavio. And this is the Astro Turf outside the stadium. Stadium's over there. Just finished the first training, and I'm drenched in sweat. Probably lost a couple kilos. It's so hot in Malaysia at the moment, so gonna go upstairs, change clothes, and uh, drink a coconut and have some electrolytes. I bought this from the pharmacy. It's all rehydration salts. It's better than Gatorade or Powerade. For replacement of body fluids and electrolytes, lost in diarrhea and vomiting. I didn't have any diarrhea or vomiting, but I have one of these. And also, a couple days ago I bought like five or six coconuts just from the street out in the villages. Bought them for three or four ringgit. It's cheaper than the uh, supermarket and I prefer buying it off the locals than a big supermarket. So I'll open this up. It's got a lot of fluid and I'll get back what I lost. So I just had a quick cold shower. These are the oral sachets and you just mix it with water and then stir it. And then got a lovely coconut here. Can't beat this. So after I finish this, I'm gonna go head down to the market, buy some fresh vegetables, some fruit, show you what it's like there, and then come back and cook. So I'll see you guys at the market. Ciao. Okay, so this is the fruit section, and there's a lot of different fruit that they sell here. Okay, just bought some local bananas. So with the local bananas here, they're not like commercially produced, so they have seeds in it. So this is some of the fruit, just bought that. Anybody know what that is? It's a long arm, look at these. Look like echidna, mango. Look how big this van is, damn. So this market is divided into many sections. Down below there is like the vegetable section and they got seafood down at the back there. Up the top here they're selling um, some clothes and also there's a few restaurants up here selling local food. And then on the other side where we were before there's some fruit. So it's a massive market and there's a lot of good quality fruit and veg. Alright so just buying some tofu off this lady here. piece off for you. Uh, there's fresh local meat and there's also imported meat that you can buy. Just got back from the market, I'll show you what I bought. So I got some local bananas, papaya, mango, soursop and some tofu, local mushrooms, half a kilo, eggplant, some of these long beans, this is one of my favorite vegetables, just uh, chop them up and then cook them and then some bean sprouts, fry that with some okra and eggplant and some coconut milk. 
Okay, so for lunch, just got these long beans, frying it up with some onion and some garlic, and then also got these beautiful mushrooms, local mushrooms. We'll see how they taste. Hopefully they're not like the mushrooms in Amsterdam. Magic mushrooms. <laughs> All right, so you might notice that I don't have any meat here. I don't eat meat that often. And the reason why is because I prefer to eat quality meat. Nowadays, chicken, for example, you can buy it at such a low cost and you've got to really think, what type of chicken are you eating? I mean, to produce a chicken for a few dollars, it can't be that good quality. I mean, the chickens would probably be grown together in a tight space. There'd be thousands of chickens and just like a human, when a human's under stress, what will happen? You'll get sick. So obviously these animals are going to be under a lot of stress and their body is going to be sick. So why would you want to put something that is sick inside your body? So that's why I limit my meat intake and I only eat uh, good quality meat. So today is just vegetarian. Vegetarian is probably the best diet for you. And you get enough protein from the mushrooms. And tonight I'm going to cook like a curry with this coconut milk, eggplant, okra, and some tofu there, some fresh tofu. After I'll have a nap, 45 minutes, and then I've got my second training in the afternoon. But yeah, let's get cooking. Okay, so I've got everything prepared now. Onion, garlic chopped up, mushrooms, bean sprouts, and long beans. Okay, so what every household needs is a rice cooker. So simple to cook the rice. So I'll make some cups of rice. And also, always buy a big sack of rice and then tie it up. This is Taiwanese rice, short grain. It's beautiful. Many people can't tell the difference between rice, but as an Asian, there is a big difference and I love my rice. So I'll cook three cups and have that with the lunch. And then we wait 30 minutes. Next, the bean sprouts, a bit of water. Here's my lunch, I've got everything cooked up. It only takes 30 minutes to prepare. <laughs> and then here I've got my special bag. This makes me perform at the next level. It's my secret, my secret ingredient. No, it's just actually, I'll just show you. I better get a clean spoon. Okay, so this is just roasted peanuts with roasted sesame seeds and they're pounded together and it's a bit of extra protein. It tastes fantastic. Yummy. This is my diet that I eat on a daily basis. Now every football is different. I'm not going to tell you what is the best diet in the world because there's so much debate whether this diet is good, this diet is good. But what I would say is that the best thing is that you have a well-balanced diet with a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruit, and mix it up, not too much of one thing. I was just reading the book by Gary Neville, his autobiography, and he was saying what he would uh, eat before the game, and I'll just read it to you. Week after week, I'd go to bed like clockwork and eat the same meals. I didn't want to take any chances. The day before a game, it was always the same. 8 a.m., breakfast of cereal and orange juice. Noon, fish, potatoes and vegetable. 3.30, cereal and a piece of toast. 7 p.m., pasta with soup. 9.15, lights out. I'd even take cereal and my own bowl and spoon on the train if we were going down to London. I'd sit there at 3.30 precisely, munching on my wheat bix as the train rolled through the countryside and the other lads in the team were pissing themselves laughing. They could laugh, but these rituals mattered to me. So this was his diet. He was a top professional and every footballer is different. Your body processes food at different rates. So you need to try what's good for you and see what works. So I don't like to eat close to training at least three hours before training. I like to eat 
and then after this I'll normally go for a nap, 45 minutes, which I will do, and then I've got afternoon training and I'll have a snack and a coffee before that. I'm so hungry. Mmm, beautiful. These I asked before where the mushrooms are from, they're local mushrooms. It's always good to buy local stuff instead of um, importing it from a, a long distance. Alright guys, I'm about to head to training and yeah, this is just a glimpse into a normal day in my life of what I eat. There is a lot of good restaurants in Kalantan and I will show you that in future episodes, some beautiful food in Cotabaru. And yeah, there'll be future episodes, but this was just a little insight into my day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm making that curry tonight. I'm not gonna show you that. This is not a cooking show, but it's just a, a glimpse into what I eat. So I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something from it. And until next time, guys, ciao. Now my wife's happy that I'm leaving. <laughs>